Hey everyone, welcome back to another very exciting Unity VFX tutorial. And this time we're going to be creating this heavy rainfall effect that you see here in the background. Now, just so you can get a better view, I'm going to zoom out and tilt the camera a bunch of times. And what you'll notice, what you'll notice is really it's just a boxed effect which you'd have following the player around. So, and there's some other elements which I didn't quite leave in, and I'm not going to go over them in the tutorial like this lightning, which didn't really fit the style of the effect, even though it looks pretty cool. And then as a breakdown, you know, you have the splashes and the ripples, which if you hide the flat plane, it's just the rain. And then you have the rain sheets, so I don't use as many particles. And then, of course, you have the individual raindrops coming down. Now, as usual, I'm going to be using textures from my Ultimate VFX particle pack, mainly these three right here. So this is for the rain and the rain sheets. All right, so without any further delay, let's get started. First thing we want to do, of course, is create a new particle system so we can start from scratch. And for the shape, I want it to be a box, right? So I want it to be about 10 meters, 10 meters in Z space. So you'll see what that looks like. Now, right now it's rotated, so let me just reset that. There you go. All right, so you have the box, and we want this to be up in the sky somewhere. So maybe about 10 units up there, 10 meters up. And instead of going this way, we want it to be dropping down. So let's just add some velocity over lifetime. Now there's different ways you can do this. You can also just, you know, enable gravity. Actually first disable the speed, but you could just enable gravity, uh, which might be good for physics-based games, but in that case, just to make the raindrops fall at the speed you'd expect, you'd have to put this up higher and then the lifetime would be higher and then it just wouldn't be as efficient. So because we're going to go for a general solution here, we'll just use velocity over lifetime instead of gravity. Okay. So let's have them falling down. Okay. So they'll be falling down pretty fast. Next, of course, we need to change the texture to a stretched billboard. So they face the way they're falling. That way, if you want to add, you know, some wind effects, well, they would actually point in that direction. And we don't want to use the default particle system. What we want to use is the capsule, as I pointed out earlier, which just looks like this. And so I'm just going to type in capsule alpha because I want the alpha texture for capsule, and specifically I want capsule 3, which is the long one. You can see it's capsule 3. So this will do. And then I need to turn the opacity way, way down. That's way too bright. So for now, I'll leave it at that, and let's see if we can change the scale a bunch. Now previously, you could also just do it here, but with Unity 5.5, there is a better way, a more versatile way of doing it, and that's to just set the 3D size directly. So let's choose a random between two constants. Okay, yeah, maybe like 0.1 for now. Okay, and then depending on how much you want it to stretch, you might set this to like 2 or 3 and 2 or something like that. Let's have some more particles falling down. Okay, so that looks like rain roughly. It's just too bright, so let's turn this down, turn the opacity down. Something like there. That looks very rainy. Okay, maybe 1 and 2 because it was way too right over there. And we need to adjust the start lifetime because right now we've got a lot of wasted particles just falling through. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this after the video is compressed, but you know, they're still going right below the ground. So we don't need that. So let's see how low we can get this. All right. So one second actually works pretty well. Next, we're going to add some variation to the fall speed. So between two constants, right? So we'll have negative 25 to, I don't know, negative 35 maybe. Okay. That's about probably the speed at, rain might, at which rain might fall. Maybe a little bit faster, but for now, that's good enough. And we can make it a bit thinner, too, if we wanted to. Something like that. Okay, and we could leave it like a little bit wider. So there's variations in the raindrop thickness. Okay, so that's, that's just the... <laughs> we already have, you know, if you wanted to leave it at this, you could. That was pretty simple, but we want more heavier, more powerful rainfall. So we're going to add another particle system underneath this. And actually, we are just going to copy the variables from this particle system. And, that, and then we're going to use rain sheet. So let's see, S1. So we have, which one do we want to use? We want to use maybe S1, right? So we'll use S1. So we'll just type in rain S1 alpha. Okay, these keywords are really helpful. So you get rain 2, rain S1. So we'll use this one. Okay. Now... This is supposed to be a, uh, a really wide sheet, so having such a thin X and Z makes it almost invisible. So let's crank this up some. 
so we can see it better. Okay, and then we're just gonna select wireframe here so I can see what's going on. Okay, so in this case, actually, it's gonna be stretched sideways if I set it to stretched billboard just because of the way it's aligned. So you can see the raindrop was aligned this way, the capsule. And this one's aligned this way. So for that reason, when you stretch it, it actually stretches horizontally, which is not what we want. So for this one, we can actually just use vertical billboard. Okay, let's just move it out. Stop that, stop that. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so we still can't really see it. So let's set this to eight by eight. Can I see it now? Okay, I can just barely begin to see it. It's just the alpha needs to, there you go. So now you can see it better. This might be something like, I don't know, 15 or 10. And this might be four and five, maybe. Okay, not bad. Let me just probably stretch it out a bit more. 20, maybe? Right. There you go. And we don't necessarily need it to be falling this fast for this specific sprite sheet. So let's turn this down to 15. Better. We're getting there. What happens if we did set this to 8? Or even 15? And we might need to change this to something. There you go. That's what was stopping it. So let's, let's set this back to 8. Or 5. 5 and 8. Okay. So that looks like really heavy rainfall right there. Set this back to shaded. Too much, in fact. So let's turn the opacity down. Way, way down. Okay, and we can ch change the emission rate. We don't need that many particles being emitted. We can have just a few mixed together. So if we put this back in here, we can see them playing together, and you can see what that looks like. These might still be a little bit too wide. We can make them always smaller if we need to, like that. Okay, that's good. And we'll duplicate this particle system and, again, choose rain, but this time we're going to use S4, which is basically almost the same thing, but it's just blurred and stretched out more automatically. So we want the alpha, choose this, and this one doesn't need as much stretching because it's already pre-stretched. Let's see what it looks like on its own. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And we'll put that back in. Okay. So we'll call this, we'll just rename them now because we, you know, in another tutorial video, we ran into some trouble. Well, I ran into some trouble where I couldn't remember what was what. So rain, sheet, and rain sheet again. Okay, so that roughly looks like uh, pretty heavy rain. Next thing we'll want, of course, and let me just see actually how far it's going below. So that's, that's acceptable. Uh, next thing we'll want, what we'll want to do is create some splash particles. Right, so some ripples and splashes. So let's start with the ripples first. So let's create a new particle system. Let's uh, actually disable every part of this. And this is just a trick so that what happens in Unity is anything that's parented to a particle system, right, a child of the particle system, all of them will play at once. Now, we want this to be just the plane, right? So we want every particle system underneath this to play uh, just for preview purposes, so we're going to create, this This is really just a dummy particle system. It's not going to emit some anything, you're not going to see anything. And it's just so it gives Unity the hint to play any particle, system, uh, particle systems underneath it. So we can preview them easily while we create the effect. And that way, if we don't want the ripples, we can always just disable this particle system in one go. Uh, similar to what I had right here. So you can see this one, same thing. Right? It's a dummy particle system, none of the modules are enabled. So, okay, going back to this. So this is going to be a ripple effect, and the plane would be negative 10 because this is raised up 10, right? So we want it to be right about on the ground, centered around 0. So for this one, we'll need horizontal billboard, so they face flat on the ground, so they're parallel to it. And again, we do, oh, we do want the box emitter, but we don't want any speed. Let's set that to 0. Okay, set it to 10. 10, and this could be basically 0.1, and let's raise it up 0.1 above the ground. So it's just barely sitting above the ground. They've got a little bit of depth, but it's not really a big deal. Okay, so we want, first of all, the ripple particle. So for that, we'll just look for ripple. We want the alpha blended version 3, just so it doesn't fade into the geometry all that much. And then we want to take the opacity down. Okay. And next, we want to do some color over lifetime shenanigans. 
So let's have it quickly fade in and then fade out. So let's just do that from scratch, actually. So we have it, we have the color, we can leave that alone. We'll have somewhere at the beginning, zero, and then at the end, zero, and then somewhere around, I don't know, 15%, we'll have it quickly fade in, and then after that, it fades out very slowly. Okay, next we want, because ripples spread outwards once the raindrop hit uh, raindrops hit the ground, we want it to increase the size over lifetime. So we can just select something like this right here. So you can see what that looks like. Right now, the lifetime is way too big, maybe like one second. Okay, so that's beginning to look like a ripple. We can also maybe have it a little bit larger just on impact. That looks good. And the size. So we want some variation in the size, maybe anywhere from 0.5 to 2. Okay, and we might we might want more of these. All right, maybe back to one, two. Well, I'll just leave it exaggerated in this case for the tutorial. You can always tweak these as you go along. And I do want this to be much less visible. Okay, so that looks like, those look like ripples. And what I'm going to do is for every ripple, I'm actually going to add a sub emitter. Just actually before I do that, copy the particle system settings, the component settings before we do this. And then on birth, I'm going to have it emit another particle system. And I'm going to paste the component values so it doesn't paste the sub emitter, just disable that. And I'm only going to want, not like this, disable looping. Disable, well, I'll just set that to zero and have it emit one particle around the birth time. And for this one, I'm going to use the swirl texture sheet alpha 3, that's right, and then just enable 8 by 8 here. Okay, so that just adds a little bit of depth to the particle system. And for this one, I'm going to do 1 and 2, and I'm going to set the start lifetime to be maybe half a second. Not sure if you can see that though. Okay, so it's there. It's just barely visible, which is you know about what I want. So again, you can tweak that. Doesn't look that great on its own, but with some tweaking, it'll look better. That's what I had in the other system too. So, All right. So let's see. That's looking pretty good, I think. Next, we want to do the splashes. So I'm actually just going to call this quickly swirls and ripples. Okay. Next, we want some splashes. So splashes will be pretty similar to the ripples effect. So for that reason, I'm going to actually copy this particle system and create a new particle system and then just paste those values. Okay. But I don't want the sub emitter enabled. And the difference, though, is instead of flat on the plane, we want them stretched upward. So we're going to use vertical billboard. So, I mean, that alone could be fine, but it's not good enough. So we're going to use, we're actually going to use the smoke sprite sheet alpha to simulate the splashes. Ideally, you'd want a splash texture, but right now I haven't made one. So for now, I'll just go with this. Okay. So I need to enable texture sheet animation, otherwise, you know, it's enabling, it's emitting the whole texture sheet, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, really. Okay, and we probably can't see it that well, so let's just, there you go. Okay, so it is a bit random, which is exactly what we want. We can make the size bigger. Okay, and then maybe set this back to 32, 128. And we'll give it some random rotation. And you know what? I realized that I never actually set the random rotation for this one, so we're going to do that too real quick. So negative 360, 360, and same with this. Okay, that does actually, I think I do notice a difference. Hard to tell though. And that's fine. So this splash works pretty well. Let's, uh, let's... First of all, let's name this splash, splashes, and then duplicate it. So control D to duplicate and splash two. Now the difference between this one and the other one will be that this one's actually going to be stretching upwards and 
to the side. So this one's more of a, like a generic splash, and this one's more like a water dropping splash. I'll show you what that means in a second. So let's separate the three axes, axes. Copy, paste, but the Y axis is still the same. So for this one, we're actually gonna do something like, so for this one, you can see it's just doing that. And then for this one, specifically the Y. I'm gonna have it start here, put some point here, make it flat up here, and then basically just go down. Okay. Oops, there you go. So let's just isolate this for a second. Okay, stop this effect, and you can see what's going on. So it actually does look kind of like it's splashing and then spreading apart, right? So that's what that just did. So let's put that back in there. Whoops, not there, there. And there you have it. That's actually most of the rain effect. Now you can also add some depth to this by adding some fog in the background. So that's, because we have time, why not? Let's just add that in too. So. This is the plane. If you don't want the ripples, you can always disable this quickly. If you do want them, then you can leave it on. So as a generic effect, let's add another particle system. And this is going to be like the fog, fog effect. Let's move this down to negative 5 or maybe negative 2. Actually, wait, negative 10 for now. Let's just leave it at negative 10 for now. And we're also going to, again, use the smoke effect. So smoke alpha. Smoke. Oops. Not a moke. Smoke alpha. And we should get... Uh, this 0.51 is actually going to do well for us because we want it to not be clipping through the geometry so hard. So, all right, we got that. Let's turn this down. Start size. Well, we can play with that later. For now, let's just turn it up to 5. And, of course, you can always, you know, add variation to the other ones as well. But for this one, let's turn it down to 32. Shape, again, we want it to be a box. 10, maybe like 2 for this, 2 meters, and 10 again for this. We don't want any start speed. We just kind of want it emitting near the ground. And the size, the lifetime, actual lifetime. Right, we can make it something like that, or you can make it something much greater. So it kind of just hovers around the center, and we can always lift it up if it's too close to the ground. In this case, eights, uh, ten's fine. Okay, we can add some variation here. So four to eight, maybe. I don't know. Change this to one. This twelve. So now you have some more depth to your rain effect, and this would just be following the player around. Okay, and you can set the simulation spaces for the emitters to world space, so it doesn't, you know, it's not so jarring. So. Anyways, that just about covers what I wanted to show you guys. Leave a comment, uh, subscribe, let me know what you'd like to see for future tutorials, and thanks for watching. Bye.